Hi guys, Victoria Merchant from Keller Williams Foothills Realty based in Conifer and Evergreen, Colorado. Today I wanted to explain a little bit about the process of buying a home once you are under contract. So you found a house that you love, you have a lender that's great, you make your offer, you get under contract. Amazing. The next step is to find insurance that you like, hazard insurance, homeowner's insurance that you like. Then you wanna schedule your inspection of the property. Uh, you can inspect, um, they go under the hood of the house. They check the major functions, health, safety. Um, you can have a radon check. You can have a, a roof inspector come out. You can have a sewer line check. I, would, I recommend all of these. If there's anything specific that you're worried about, you can also have that checked. For example, if you're buying a house in a you know, rough neighborhood, you may want to check it for meth, something. You, you can, during this time frame, you can check for anything that you want. And so once all the checks are done, you make a list of all the things that you find wrong with the property that you didn't know when you went under contract. And the things that you're going to have a, a to-do list on a property that's going to be with any property. There's always things to do. There's a no GFCI outlets in the kitchen. Um, there's, you know, a broken radiator. You know, it's, there's, so, there's always something wrong with a house, even in new builds. Sometimes I ran into, like, they didn't connect the sewer, um, sewer pipe through the roof to the hole outside. So it was like just emitting into the attic space. There's always something. So, you do your inspections um, and you come up with a list of things that you would like for the, the seller to either fix or give you money for. Uh, you submit that list to the seller. They have a couple of days to think about it and then they either submit something back to you that says, um, we'll do this and this, but not this and this, or we'll give you this and it'll cover everything. And then you have the choice to accept that. If you don't want to accept it, you can terminate and you can receive your earnest money back. Um, that is fully within your rights to do. If you can't come to some kind of resolution, that's called inspection resolution, then you're more than willing to, or more than uh, able to terminate on that. Then we have the due diligence period. This can happen but before inspection, during inspection, after inspection. It's when you ask for any kind of manuals, warranties, um, any, anything, any kind of paperwork associated with the house. Um, like if you want the transferable warranty for a new roof, that's, this is a deadline for the sellers to provide that information to you. Then you have, um, if you're in an HOA, you have association deadlines. Uh, they have a certain, the seller has a certain time frame to provide to you the association, association documents. Um, so you can see whatever covenants there are, and um, any kind of uh, restrictions, like if you wanna have an RV uh, parked outside your house, some HOAs won't allow that. They won't allow extra cars or they won't allow certain pets. Um, it's important to look through your HOA documents uh, pretty thoroughly just to make sure that you can do whatever you want at the house um, that you're planning on and that it's allowed. Um, then you have, there's lead-based paint. If the home was built prior to 1978, you have to fill out a lead-based paint disclosure. Um, very rarely have I ever run into a seller knowing if they have lead-based paint or not. Um, if they do, they have to disclose it. And then it's up to the buyer, you, to decide if you're okay with that or not. Um, and if you're not, then you can terminate the contract, get your earnest money, and move on to the next house. Um, then you have ILC and survey. And so sometimes the title company will require an ILC or a survey. An ILC is an Improvement Location Certificate. What this is, is a, it's a drawing of your house and your property and all of the improvements, which are sheds, um, the house, decks, uh, drawn as to a rough scale on this little drawing um, to show that there's nothing overlapping property lines. They do not typically put fence lines in there and fencing. So they just wanna make sure that the major improvements of the property are not overlapping another property because then the title company will have an issue with certain aspects of the title insurance policy that they provide. 
now something something not very very many people realize is if if you still would like to purchase a home and get title insurance and for example the deck is overlapping a property line you can ask the title company to take out that uh, provision in the in the title insurance so they won't warrant um, that there are no, no improvements overlapping the property lines. And I can explain more about that if you would like, I don't wanna to get too deep here, but um, there's different things that you can do so that you can move forward with that sale without having to tear off the deck. Um, then in some cases, they may require a brand new survey, which is a lot more expensive than an ILC. Um, when you're buying a mountain property, it is kind of recommended to have at least an ILC done. Um, Property lines up here can be a little wonky, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into that, but sometimes it's recommended. Um, and then you have appraisal. So the appraisal is done uh, by the buyer. It's ordered usually right after you go under contract. And um, the, the appraiser will get in touch with the listing agent, set up a time to go look at the house, do the appraisal, and um, they submit that to the lender. And then if, in a, in a contract that doesn't have any kind of gap insurance coverage, which I can talk about um, in depth if you would like, um, if it doesn't have gap, gap coverage, say you just put in an offer for asking, the appraisal comes back low. Barring that there's no other unique provisions in the contract, you would go back to the negotiating table with the seller and either the seller will go down in price, the buyer will come up, um, or the contract will terminate and you are within your rights to terminate the contract if the appraisal comes in low. Now there, every contract is different. There are lots of different provisions and the details should go, should be gone over with you by your agent in depth. But that's kind of the basics of the parts of the contract. And there's lots of dates and deadlines um, that you should be aware of while you are going through this process. Um, that's kind of the gist of it. I can, if you have any more questions and want to dive deeper into any section of that that I just explained, please feel free to give me a call. Just keep in mind it was a very broad explanation, but hopefully that was informative. All right. Thanks guys. Victoria Merchant here. Um, happy to help with all of your buying and selling needs in Colorado. Thanks so much. Bye.